Your group finds an old overgrown house in the middle of the city ruins. Right, I'm gonna go up to the house door then and just give it a quick little knock right on the door. You cannot just go up and knock on the front door. Why not? It is not the way you do things. Well, I already did society. it, didn't I? No, no, right, no, no. So you're it you're not understanding. Like you're not just understanding. Got the one this is not the um, way society works. Guys, I think I hear something works. on the inside. Suddenly, two werewolves come out of the door ready to tear your face apart. Building our house, we want functionality in mind over everything. So with that, we're actually not going to start with a base. We're going to make just the walls. That way we can fit everything inside of it that we want to, you know, kind of pop out like a surprise we did with the werewolves there. So how we're setting it up is I use a one inch by one inch style grid for D&D. So I want mine to fit in a four by five footprint. So first we're going to cut a four inch section on my hot wire cutter and then we'll cut a five inch section you do not need a hot wire cutter to get this done you can definitely do it with a knife and i'm just using xps or extruded polystyrene foam that you can get at home depot lowe's any of your local kind of hardware stores after those cuts i decided to make everything three eighths of an inch thick so i'm just cutting them up so that they're all square here after i get all of the sizes that i want and i need six pieces for everything total uh, I'm going to be able to glue them up. Just some dabs of hot glue will pretty much hold everything together. Hot glue sticks to XPS like nobody's business. It is super strong and you won't have to worry about it in the future. Now I messed up my math. I just made four inches by five inches. Now if I'm trying to fit it in a five by four grid, that doesn't work. So see these arrows right here? Uh, that's indicating that I made it too big. So I'm just cutting off an additional three eighths inch or three fourths inch on the side so that it all fits right and tight in that four by five grid that I was looking for. Now I'm gonna cut an additional set of two five by four rectangles. This way I can make the roof. I want them to be angled together, but because I don't want them to be offset in size, I need to cut another three eighth inch off the top there so that they line up perfectly. So I do that and they kind of have that nice little triangle overlap there. I get a little hot glue on myself and then I kind of see if it fits how I want it to. It does, uh, it doesn't stay up well, so I need to kind of give it some support and that's what we're going to make next. This is a fairly easy process. You just kind of set it where you would want it to be sitting on the building and make some pencil marks. Then you can set the roof piece that you have there up against a piece of foam that you plan on using for the support. And where those pencil lines mark up, you just mark it and then make a straight line across. Now you have a perfect triangle that you can use and just go on a hot wire cutter or use your knife and make your cuts. It's easiest to get identical cuts by just laying the piece that you already cut out right back on top. And then that kind of is your guide when you're making your second piece. And then you have two identical pieces and you just place those up. Those are your supports. And then you're able to place the roof right on top. Of course, this doesn't fit it alone. You're gonna need to glue it all on there so that it sticks. So what I did was I placed a bead of hot glue on both sides of where the triangle was going to meet up. I made sure to place them behind where the front wall kind of connects. Uh, that's kind of aesthetically how I wanted it to be. So again, placing hot glue on the back side and then you just place your triangle up there. It will hold itself because you're going to glue it again to something and that makes it all right, tight and sturdy. So take your roof, do a test fit with it because this is kind of your last chance to make changes. It's a lot easier to move the triangles around if you don't like it and then just place a ton of glue glue on both triangles do it definitely both at one time lay your roof down and you've got you know a few seconds to kind of position it how you want it forward and back but once you're happy with that your fit is done then we're gonna make the door for the house I made mine an inch and a quarter by two inches I think that kind of fit nicely as a door and after you cut that out we're going to make kind of a wood grain pattern in the door so it'll look old oakish and it'll get kind of a nice depth to it so once I pull this away, you'll be able to see, boom, it looks like a wood piece of door. And now we need to texture the outside. You really 
can do this ahead of time, honestly, I just forgot, uh, but this works just as good. So take a tin foil ball and kind of texture along the side of your walls. We want ours to kind of look very stone-esque and a tin foil ball does this very, very well. Decide which side of the house you want to be your front door, put some hot glue on the back of the door that you created, and boom, you can already see the difference between what looks like a stone wall and a wooden door, even without any paint. I think it looks great so far, but now we gotta move on to the really only tedious part of this build. So what I did was take a bunch of my eighth inch scraps and we're going to make a ton, a ton of oak planks because you're gonna need them for pretty much about everything. I took the eighth inch and made them all three fourths of an inch wide and then you just kind of run your pencil down the same way you did with the oak door. The less you can make straight lines like me because I'm a horrible drawer writer of anything, uh, the better actually. The more jagged they are, that makes it look more natural. So just run a bunch of them down and look, when I kind of pull them up, you can see it does look like a bunch of oak planks. So do this a ton more times and then we can begin gluing them down all around the house in ways that look like they are structurally important to keeping the house up. Now I kind of chose to use them as both baseboards and kind of corner boards. So I lay a bunch down and then you can kind of just glue them and let them hang off the edge. It's not a big deal. The best way to do it is actually that way. Let them hang off the edge and then just take your knife and cut them flush. Once you pick one side, then make sure you glue over where the edge of the other one is so that it looks like it was kind of planned instead of they're both just leaving a weird gap there. Uh, and now we're going to put them kind of up in the holding the roof up section, which is a little difficult. I had to cut the corners off, you see, with a knife to make mine sit flush, and I didn't like it just sitting there by itself, so I also cut off two little scrap corner pieces and just hot glued them in there. It made it look a little weird, but it still kind of looked like continuous boards that were going around, so I was fine with it. I did that on the front and the back, it's important that you do it on both, but the back will be less noticeable, and I'll kind of show you why here in a little bit. After you get that kind of corner piece in, then we're able to get the sides up. I like to do it just on the kind of side walls rather than the front and the back walls as well. I thought on the front it was a little too much. I ended up doing something else instead later, but you know. And then there were some little holes and I just filled those with some scrap foam to make it look like additional wood was used to hold it up. It's not a big deal, but it bothered me, so I wanted to change it. And finally, the last bit of the holding the roof up, I just added some more support looking pieces of wood both on the front and back. After checking the kind of roof I decided to go with what is not a penis, it is actually a chimney. <laughs> it kind of looks like a, you know what, never mind. We're going to pull the baseboard off the back. You actually don't need to put the baseboard there. I didn't think I was going to do a chimney when I first built this, I just felt like it was too flat all on its own and it needed something. So you can kind of see how the chimney was made, I just did the stone kind of texturing with the foil ball as I did around the edge of the house and just made a long piece with some kind of side. So I don't really need to show you how to do that one. You can do that with a knife on your own. Uh, you're smart people, you can figure it out. So now it was time to do a little bit more of a glue up for the roof. I liked how the wooden planks were looking on the side and I kind of wanted it to look continuous like this person got all their wood from the same supplier or whatever. So I just decided, hey, you know what? I'm gonna use all the extra ones of these for the kind of roofing instead of getting shingles. This is supposed to be made out in the woods and overgrown and stuff, right? So why wouldn't they just use more of the same wood cuts that they already had? So hot glue will do the trick here as well. Uh, you're going to place your planks on the back first and then add to the front later, leaving some overhang. One of my sides kind of got stuck or cut into the chimney, so I just decided to cut a little corner of it away and it fit just fine. All I had to do was hot glue it there and it actually kind of added to it. I think it added a little bit more intricacy and depth and made this kind of look a little bit more realistic as it were. So again, just kind of gluing up, leave the overhang, don't worry about that. We're gonna cut that with a knife and leave some jagged edges, which I think looks better than just leaving it anyway. But then you really wanna make sure it's cut flush with the original tile-esque thing that we put down for the roof. That way there's no kind of super overhang. And then just take your knife and cut right along the face of it. I could have used the hot wire cutter, but I was really afraid of accidentally touching the front and ruining everything. So I just used a knife. Knife worked out great. I was able to make sure everything was flush and kind of get that jagged, I cut these wood timbers off myself look, which, you know, you can't you can't buy that in a store. You gotta make that yourself. And don't forget to do the wood part for the underneath. That way you can see from under the house and it'll look good too. I decided the front was still a little too plain for my taste, so I wanted to put a slab of wood going across there to kind of break up the giant stone look that it had. For the doorknob, I'm using a leather rivet. 
held in place with a dab of. Just kidding, do not use super glue on XPS foam. I made this mistake and it just eats right through it like acetone. But don't worry, I made a replacement door to cover up the horrible mess and hole that exists now. So the next part is using some Mod Podge and black paint, and I got this idea from Black Magic Craft. He makes amazing craft videos, and if you haven't seen it, go check it out. I don't know how you've seen my videos, but not his, so that's probably not the case. But what this does is it not only seals this and kind of locks everything in tight because it's using Mod Podge, but the black paint gives it a base coat, so you don't really have to go in and give it an additional base coat if you don't want to, or if you're in a hurry. I wasn't necessarily in a hurry, but I don't like to, and I like the black as the base coat, so it worked for me. Then I decided to make a mixture of a couple different browns to get the brown that I wanted, and that kind of gave the oaky look that I was going for for out in the forest. Now, you might have to come back and redo these if you're a sloppy painter like I am, but that's fine. Just come back and do it again. Then you'll get your lines all nice and crisp. After that, I took a antique white, which is really kind of a cream-ish white, to the walls. If you want it to look like it was painted on, you're just gonna leave it like that. But after this, we're gonna put a wash on and the wash will immediately turn this into kind of an old stone look. If you want this to look like a newer kind of English model, just leave it with white, but I didn't want that, so I don't. Uh, and then I took a kind of lightish gray and went over the chimney with that. That I was happy with pretty much right away. And now we're gonna move on to the wash. So you can use Citadel washes they're just so expensive for things that are this large. So I made my own out of black paint, green paint, brown paint, water, and a tiny bit of dish soap. Also got that idea from Black Magic Craft. So just cover your model in this stuff. It kind of adds shadows and depth and texture to everything. So you can see immediately right there, like that oak looks so much better. So just absolutely coat your model in it. As you can see, the kind of white painted walls, they just turn something entirely different. It's what I was looking for, but you might not be looking for that. So use your best judgment. I just wanted mine to look all overgrown and old. So it fit with the theme I was trying to go with. Now is for the extremely fun part, which is the dry brushing. So I just took an extremely light gray, and with this, I'm gonna go over all of the stone. If you're not familiar with what dry brushing is, it's just loading your paint brush with paint, completely removing it almost on a paper cloth, and then taking the pigments that are kind of left over, and then you just kind of scrape over your terrain and or your miniature and it just kind of hits the highlights and gives it such crazy depth as you can see here that gray that i had is just immediately now a chimney it, it looks stone like and it's wonderful if i really wanted this to look more like natural stone i could have put some browns in there but i was fine with this kind of gray it's a chimney it should have some soot on it i also took a bit of gray and went over the stone giving it an even more like ah this is aged stone that we kind of just put here and it, it worked for me after that i took a much lighter brown and did the same kind of dry brushing take a bunch of the paint off and then go over your wood planks doing so really kind of makes them look old and frayed and kind of washed with time and the weather and it it works really well to kind of give some age to your terrain or models. Now, if you want to, you can just stop right there. You've got yourself a nice looking old house and really you're done, but I wanted to try something new. I wanted this to be overgrown and so we're gonna use some coarse turf that you can get from Woodland Scenics. It seems like $11 is a lot, but I swear this bottle will last you a lifetime. So just take some PVA kids glue and throw it on there, honestly. Really, whatever pattern you make, the more natural, the better, and then just throw a ton of this stuff on there. Whatever doesn't land on there, we can use later. So again, just glue all sorts of parts that you want to look covered in kind of a moss and vines or whatever, and just throw a ton of this stuff on there. It, it adds kind of that overgrown look to it and the glue will dry clear. So whatever you put on there, don't worry. It, even if it looks shiny now, dries clear and it's going to look great. So I really, really like how the grass kind of came out on there and it, it it changes the whole look of this from just a house to kind of that overgrown look that I was going for and so yay we're done well we're kind of done like I said you can take all of those extra ones and just throw them right back in the bottle you can use them later they're perfectly fine and then I did a thin coat of the polyurethane to make this last a lot longer I am extremely excited this was my first time kind of doing a house period and it was also my first time doing anything with the 
grass and the vines and it, it just adds so much depth. I'm definitely going to be using it in the future. This house will be great for helping people visualize, you know, like, hey, there's an obstacle and this is something important. And it kind of puts your players in the right frame of mind and in the mood for an adventure with an overgrown house. So if you like this, comment what you might want to see in a future build. Please like, subscribe if you want to see more, and thanks for stopping by, adventurer. Attack with Mordecai and his magnificent mansion! That's not an offensive spell. No, no, wait, oh, no! Oh,